This is a faithful kind of love Everlasting Father Prince of Peace Emmanuel God with us you here with me Wonderful Counselor The government is resting on your shoulders You are the final word You alone decide when every page will turn So I will trust your timing I will rest secure this is a steady kind of love. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you're here with me. Wonderful Counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, God with us, you're here with me. Wonderful Counselor, the government is resting on your shoulders.
Yeah, so God, we thank you for your grace this morning. We thank you for your goodness and your love to us. Thanks for carrying us. Thanks for holding us in times, God, where we couldn't do it on our own. And so we relied on you, and you've been so faithful along the way. And so just be with us as we continue to worship you this morning in, uh, in song and in service and in word. We love you, and we thank you so much. In Jesus' name, everyone said. Everyone said. All right, say hi to 17 people. High fives for 17 people. Come on, you can do that. Ben, fix this. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you guys can grab a seat if you're not there already. So good. Give it up for the worship team this morning, by the way. 
I love it. I love it. I love it. Brad is leading for the very first time. Give it up for Brad. Yeah. So good. This is my friend Aaron. Everyone say hi, Aaron. She is not scared at all. I promise you. It's her very first time uh, playing keys here at Exchange. So give it up for her one more time. So, so good. Hey, we just want to welcome you. Take a second to welcome you to Exchange Church. If this is your first time, my name is Drew React, lead pastor here at Exchange. And just so glad that you've decided to uh, hang out with us this morning. We got a lot going on these days. And the best way to do that, you know this, you know how it goes. Uh, you need to follow us uh, on Exchange dot church on Instagram and everything kind of flows from there. You can find us on Facebook. If you're, you know, the Facebook type of person, you can find us there and uh, always information about what's going on. I uh, want to let you know, again, school is in full swing and all the parents said, amen. amen. Amen, for sure. Uh, school is in full swing, and uh, we just keep kind of putting this in front of you that uh, we partner with Marlboro Public School down on the west end, the west side of Windsor, and uh, we have a feeding program there, and we filled up four out of five days of the week to uh, feed these beautiful kids, make sure they got full bellies uh, going into the school day. So again, if you're interested in jumping in on that, uh, you can email Pastor Brad. You can find him, hunt him down, go to his house, whatever you need to do. And, uh, and just say like, hey, I need to get in on that. A few other things that are coming up. Junior highs. Uh, do we got any J highs in the house? Or right, right here, right in front of me, we got one. Zoe's in the, in the room this morning. I know I've seen a couple. Junior highs is starting up again uh, September 24th. That's a Sunday. We're changing it to a Sunday vibe. And you're like, Sunday? I don't, I don't know how that works. Listen, we were doing it on Tuesdays. Tuesday was a school night. Sunday is a school night. What I love about Sunday night is there's really nothing in competition with it. So it's an easy night to uh, get those J highs out to, to uh, the program, invite a friend. Uh, we're doing it at Parkwood Gospel Church now, which is fantastic. Uh, Pastor Danny and the team there has just been super open-handed and saying like, hey, you can have the entire facility. So we're going to run the joint into the ground. I mean, we're going to we're gonna have a lot, a lot of fun. We got the gym. We got the chapel. It's going to be a lot of fun. So September 24th, starting at six o'clock at night for the junior highs. It's going to be a great, great time uh, together. Also, marriage conference is coming up. Lots of people are still signing up. It's great. Um, that is going on October 20th and 20, 20th, 21st at Heritage Park uh, Alliance Church. Again, they've been so gracious to uh, let us use their facility. It's going to be a great time. Je uh, Justin and Jennifer Reimer from Vancouver, Vivid Church, one of our ARC churches in, uh, in the country. They're going to be with us as well uh, on Sunday morning. So you want to sign up for that, go to our website, ecwindsor.com, and you can sign up. Uh, I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to hunt you down. If I know you're married and you're not signed up, I'm coming for you. All right? So just, just be ready for that. So you might as well just get it out of the way and, uh, and sign up today. It's going to be a, a good time. Uh, for sure. Hey, thanks so much for uh, just your partnership here at Exchange Church. Listen, I, I still believe, we used to say this a lot more than we do, so maybe I need to say it again, but I really believe that the best days of the church are ahead of us. Amen? Yeah. Come on, if you, can, if you believe that, you can say amen. You can partner with me in faith. I believe that the best days of the church are uh, ahead of us. And uh, and so thanks for partnering with us. Again, your time, your, treasure, your treasures, your talents. And you guys are just absolutely incredible. Hey, if you want to partner with us in finances today, you can give uh, e-transfer. Give at ecwindsor.com. You can go on the website and you can just, uh, you know, kind of set it and forget it, which is, uh, I think, the best way to do it. Or there's going to be a bucket on the way out this morning. I'm sure there's lots. Lots more going on, but we're going to get back into worship. Uh, we're in a series called The Sunday Situation. Who was here last week for that? Did you enjoy that? Was that helpful? Uh, we got part two, and uh, I promise it's going to be just as good, uh, but you're going to feel it this morning. You're going to feel it this morning. It's going to be good. So we got one more song. We're going to worship, and I want you to stand with me. Uh, we'll pray one more time, and we'll jump uh, back in. But God, thanks again for this morning. Thanks again for the church that we have the opportunity to gather in your name. And for all that we've talked about, all the things that are coming up, all the things that we're holding in life, intention, I just pray that even in this moment, we'd be able to lay it all down 
any frustrations, fears, anxieties, even the hope for what's to come, may all of it just like be laid at your feet and our focus alone would be on you. And so we thank you that you're changing our hearts, that you're giving us better perspective. And uh, yeah, that Holy Spirit, you're just drawing us to the sun this morning. We love you and we thank you for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Come on, church, let's worship.
Come on, sing this out. My heart and my soul, I give you control. Consume me from the inside out. Let justice and praise become my embrace to love you from the inside out. And so, God, would you be honored this morning by our praise as we lift you high, the name above all names. God, I just pray that you would be honored because all we really want to do and all our lives are really for is to bring glory to your name. So help us this morning. Actually, let that be our focus this morning, bringing our thoughts and our attentions back to the times when, God, maybe we've missed the mark. And not that you shame us or you guilt us or any condemnation, God, but remind us that our lives, that, that every breath that you've, that you've so graciously given us is to bring glory and honor to your name. So change us this morning from the inside out. Lord, do a job, do, do a work in our hearts. I pray that no one in this place would leave the same as they came in. But Holy Spirit, do the work that only you can. Again, maybe it's a specific uh, thought or, or a word that is brought forth this morning. Maybe it was one of the songs. Whatever it is, God, give us something to think on and to, to chew on and really just to bring back to you in honor and glory as we're so thankful for the things that you've given us, the things that you're doing in and through us these days. You're so good, and we love you so much. Come on, just focus on his goodness for a second. Yeah, you're so good, Lord. You're so good, God. Yeah, we love you. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, come on, everybody said, so, so good. Give it up for the band one more time. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. You guys can grab a seat. I'll take a second to get set up here. Can you guys, like, make some noise for me? I feel like yeah, I just want to make sure that everyone's awake. It's good. It's good. Take some time, guys. Can we get these lights just turned down the tiniest bit? Mr. Eiler, you're a legend, absolute legend. It was funny. I, I was uh, I was kind of watching the band practice this morning, and Brad said, um, "Aaron, what year were you born?" And I think it was 2006, right? 2006, you were born. Come on, give it up for that, by the way. Like what? And, and Brad goes, that's when this song was written. <laughs> and so like a little blast from the past there, uh, from the inside out. Love that uh, from youth days. But uh, yeah, just so thankful again for the, for the gifts, the talents, the abilities that uh, people in this, this church hold and really just are, are, are bringing in acts of service. And, uh, and really that's kind of where we're going this morning. Uh, make some noise if you were with us uh, last week. Okay, you need to invite seven people next week, okay? Because this one, like, this, this is the kind of message this morning. And uh, there, there's always a, a, bit, a bit of a struggle in me because, like I said last week, it's easy for pastors to preach opinion. Amen? Like, I don't know, I don't know if you, you sense that, if you feel that, if you've kind of been in those spaces. I don't want to be the pastor who preaches opinion, but I want my, my thoughts and my, my opinions to be formed by the Word of God this morning. And, and as I was writing this, I got to be honest with you, I wrote a completely different message. I had, a, I had a message written, and it was ready to go, and it was in... It was, you know, kind of in the vault for, for the week. I was ready to go. And just as I was going through some conversations and, and just going through, um, you know, go, going through the motions and just going through life this week, I really just felt I, I had a conviction and, uh, and, and more so uh, a conviction. I had like this, this thought from Holy Spirit, like you actually need to bring the people along the, the journey or the thought process that you find yourself in right now. And so that's what we're going to do. That's where we're going to live, and, uh, and, I, and I just want you to, to be with me. But we're going to do a little recap um, this morning. We kicked off a series last week, and it was called The Sunday Situation. And again, I don't know if you were here or, or not. It sounds like a lot of you were, but Holy Spirit just reminding us of how important the local church 
really is, how important the local church is. Uh, and and um, I would love for you to go back and dive into the YouTube if you, uh, if you, if you missed out on that. But it's going to give you some context. It's going to give you some understanding of where we were and, and where we, where we are, are going. But last week, I'm just resting in the thought that Holy Spirit wants to continue to uh, remind us that the most important thing to the heart of God is the local church. That being both building and body, place and person, because you are the church. Someone say, I am the church. Look at the person next to you and say, you are the church. And then the person that you didn't choose and say, yeah, you too. You know, you're, you're, you're also the church. Again, we're calling this the Sunday situation. Uh, and we've taken this name from the Urban Dictionary. Don't go down the rabbit trail. Uh, we're, uh, we've taken this from the Urban Dictionary. And basically what the Urban Dictionary says about a Sunday situation is a relationship that you've specifically carved out on a, on a, on a Sunday. Um, it's a relationship based on convenience and comfort and one that you don't have to think much of throughout the rest of the week. Someone say hello. And because you guys understand what that means both in a, in a worldly way and the, the spiritual significance of, of how we're carrying this, you know, throughout the, the series. I'm wondering what your Sunday situation is with the local church. What is your Sunday situation with the very thing on the heart of God that he is trying to build and move forward and use as a conduit to share the gospel to a broken and hurting world? What is the Sunday situation? Do you find yourself in a situation Relationship where you come on a Sunday morning and you're just checking off the box, so to speak, so that you feel good and you've, you've done your job, but maybe it's like the Sunday situation in the Urban Dictionary where you've just relegated it to a place of comfort for one day of the week. Are you allowing the thing that God is building to be what is launching you and filling you and supplying you with what you need Monday through Saturday so that you can be light and life in a broken and hurting world? I want to let you know that there is, again, an authority. We talked about the authority that God has placed on you as someone who carries the good news. That you actually have something on the inside of you. You have resurrection power on the inside of you that can change the world around you Monday to Saturday. But what's the Sunday situation? How important do you, do you find these days and how important is it to you in your everyday life? Again, I want to continue to seek Jesus. This is, my, this is like kind of what I've been praying into and, and, and wrestling through is I want to seek the heart of Jesus for this church. I do. I, I want to say, God, what do you have for this church? Where are we going? Where are you taking us? What can we do to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in our community? And, and, and I, I, I want to like press into like, God, what do you have for, for our, our people? And, and I really think that you need to seek first the kingdom. And what you need to do is you need to ask Jesus, what is my role what is my role in building? And then do nothing other than be obedient to that. Jesus, what do you have for me in this role, in, in building your church, in building your kingdom? As you build into me, as you speak life into me, what do I need to do there, there in, in turn to see your kingdom progress here on earth? And I, and I would love for us to actually not be, uh, you know, begrudgingly obedient. Come on, somebody but actually have a joyfulness inside of us that says, God, I'm actually excited and expectant and hopeful that when I put my hand to the thing that you're calling me to, that it's going to flourish and it's actually going to bring me life. Who knows that sometimes serving isn't sexy? I'm getting a laugh. That's, that's, that's fine. But who, who knows that sometimes that serving is hard and, and playing a part and playing a role is hard. But I'm wondering this morning, do you believe that God is strong enough to carry you through, you know, you know, the pains and the frustrations and the situations that you might hold and say, you know what, my burden is actually light in these things. And when you step into kingdom purpose in kingdom role, watch your life begin to flourish. And that's where I, I want to go uh, this morning. But again, I, I, you, you'll know this reference if you were here last week, how important it is to be an ambassador to the embassy of the kingdom. 
to, to wear that badge, to, to play that role, to, to say, hey, like, I am a part of something different. The land that I belong to, the kingdom that I belong to, the soil that I'm a part of, it's so much different than anything else. Again, because the kingdom of God is not peripheral to the world. I, again, I don't want the Sunday situation to be an add-on to your life. I want it to be the center of your life. I want the kingdom of heaven to be the center of your life. The relationship that you have with Jesus to be the overflow of everything else that you have to accomplish in the week. The kingdom of God should be center of your life, not on the outskirts. Amen? Amen. It should be the very, the very source of, of your life. I remember like just kind of getting back into to church and getting back into ministry. And, and Pastor Brad, who, who was leading a, a, another church here in, in Windsor, Essex, and he would encourage us to start our day on our knees, to start our day 15 minutes in the Word. And I just like, man, that sounds so simplistic and so like, yeah, I, I mean, I could do that. But then when you actually start implementing it in your life, making the things of the kingdom central, you actually begin to see how Holy Spirit shows up and how he brings you life and how it actually forces you to actually rely on him. It's easy to go to TikTok first thing in the morning, amen? Okay, no one's on TikTok? MySpace? It's easy to jump on that, you know, your, your phone and scroll. But, uh, but uh, again, I'm, I'm encouraging you, even in the Sunday situation, what is the kingdom worth in your life? How important is it to you that you start setting up disciplines in your life for him to ride in on so he can not only change you, but he can change others around you? My heart this morning is that you would... Um, is there would be something on the inside of you that would light up. When again, we looked at Matthew 16, 18 last week, where Jesus says to Peter, now I say to you, Peter, which means rock, that upon this rock I will build my church and the powers of hell will not conquer it. The powers of hell cannot stand against it. I'm wondering if you're, built, if you're letting Holy Spirit build something on the inside of you, again, something unshakable, some of you are wearing the sweater today, and I love it. You look pretty. Something unshakable on the inside of you that says, this is the part of the kingdom. This is a part of the kingdom that I am a part of. It is unshakable. The gates of hell will not stand against it. And because I belong to something, I'm actually going to invest in something. I'm actually going to step up and step out and say, God, what would you have for me? What role would you have me play in these types of situations, uh, in, these, in these situations? So again, uh, if that's not a refresher for you, I'd love for you to go back and check it out. But really what I want to accomplish and, and where we're taking this the, this morning, the Sunday situation, is the importance of the local church both to, uh, uh, to God, both place and person, and then moving to a place of action. Again, last week we, we, we went there. How important this is to the heartbeat of Jesus. How important it is that this would be a place of health, a place of healing. Uh, is, it, is it perfect? No. Is it ever going to be perfect? No. Because there are people involved, and people are broken, and people are flawed. But God is big enough to use us and to, to work through us to see his kingdom being being built. So this is uh, important. But if he cares, I got to care. If he, if he loves this, I got to find something to love about it. If he's invested in it, I'm going to pour into it. If this is his heart, my heart should beat for the things of the kingdom. And so the local church, again, this is how God moves. It's one of the strongest conduits for the good news to be brought forth into the world. And I'm wondering if there's someone in the room that needs to check their Sunday situation. Uh, again, the church is the vehicle. This is what we talked about. The church is the thing that gets the gospel to move. And there's a function or a role that you play in order to get that message to move. So I know nothing about cars. Can I get an amen? Anyone else? I, I, I text Tristan this. I said, Tristan, I'm going to be preaching about my car uh, on Sunday. And, and he said, I'll be praying for you or something like that. 
I don't know, I don't know if you've seen my car, but this, this thing is in rough shape. Um, it's, all, it's all rusted out. I mean, this thing's 13 years old, all right? God is good. Um, and it gets me from point A to point B. But man, the bottom's all rusted out. And the second you turn on, the, Chris has got a big smile on his face because Chris is, is doing some work at my house. So he sees me coming and going a lot. And the second I turn on my car, it sounds like World War III has started. Like it is, it is crazy. It sounds like there's a few tanks in the driveway. And, uh, and, and it is absolutely crazy. Again, I've been driving it for, uh, for 13 years and, and it's a little janky. And it's a, it's a little, it's a little wild, uh, but, but this is what I was thinking about, like, my nasty, broken down car that is still moving. And then I was, like, uh, thinking about the things uh, of the kingdom. I know that it sounds gross, and it's a little broken, and it's a little rusty, but I know that every single part that is still working in my car has a part to play to get me from point A to point B. You guys see where I'm going with this? Even though it's broken, even though it's flawed, even though it sounds funny, it's still, I still got a steering wheel, I still got a pedal, that engine is still helping me out to get to where I need to go. And so my car would be absolutely useless if the pieces weren't, weren't working as they should. And, and the, the Bible actually gives us a really great understanding of, of the idea of church and your role there within. And I actually want to spend some time, and, um, and Carly loves me because she had to copy and paste this all onto the screen this morning. But I really want to spend some time in, in a verse that you guys will probably know quite well. You've probably heard this. You probably already understand it, but my hope is that you will get a deeper revelation of what Holy Spirit, where he wants to place you and what he wants to say to you within these verses. So we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 12, and we're going to kind of jump around a little bit, but we're going to go 12 to 31. So that's a lot. Do you love your word this morning? Wow. Do you love the word this morning? Okay, let's jump in. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 31. You can easily enough see how this kind of thing works by looking no further than your own body. Than your own body. Your body has many parts, limbs and organs and cells. No matter how many parts you can name, you're still one body. It's exactly the same with Christ. By means of his one spirit, we all say goodbye to our partial and piecemeal lives. Um, we, use, we each used to independently call our own shots. But then we entered into a large and interrogated, uh, integrated life in which he f- has the final say in everything. Now, that's, that's interesting. We now enter into something that is bigger than ourselves, and, and Christ has the final say in everything. Just like we saw in Ephesians last week, that through Christ, in Christ, everything, you know, takes place. Everything has its place. Everything takes form. That's what this life is all about is it's all about coming back to the understanding that we all used to live one way, but now everything has its final say in Jesus. This is what we proclaim in our word in action when we were baptized. Going to verse 14, I want you to think about how all of this makes you more significant, not less. Can I, want to, I want to let you know this morning that you are more significant when you lean on Christ than when you try to do it on your own. You are more significant in community than you are as an island. You are more helpful. You can accomplish more when we are together than when we are alone. A body just isn't a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If a foot said, I am not an elegant hand. My hands are not too elegant. I bite my nails. (laughs) Embellished with rings, uh, I guess I really don't belong to the body. Would that make it so? If you said, I'm not uh, beautiful like an eye, transparent and expressive. I don't deserve a place on the head. Would you remove it from the body? If the body were all an eye, how could it hear? If, if, the, if uh, all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. He's placed each part of the body right 
where he wanted it. Could it be this morning that you are sitting in exchange church on a Sunday morning wrestling out your Sunday situation because he placed you exactly where he wanted you? Could it be this morning that you are hearing this message because as for such a time as this, this is exactly what he wants you to hear? But also... But I also want you to think of how this keeps your significance from getting blown up into self-importance. For no matter how significant you are, it is only because of what you are a part of. Brian, you're super significant. Love you, man. Super talented, super good looking. <laughs> Just a ni nice all-around guy. But, but what I love is seeing you play your part in the whole. Like the, the significance come and, and the anointing comes and the oh my goodness am I proud of you comes when I see you not only stepping into a specific role that you have, but there's other eyes and ears and limbs and parts that are functioning with you. It's this beautiful thing that he's, he's called us to. Can you imagine I telling the hand, get lost, I don't need you, or your head telling the foot, you're fired, your job has been phased out. As a matter of fact, in practice, if it works, uh, the other head telling the, uh, the other way, the lower part of the body, the more basic and therefore necessary. You can live without your eye for an in instance, but not without a stomach. When it's a part of your own body you're concerned with, it makes no difference whether it's a part of um, visible or clothed, high or low. You give dignity and honor just as, as it is without comparison. If anything, you have more concern with the lower than the higher. If you choose, you uh, wouldn't you prefer good digestion to a full-bodied hair? Some of you are like, no. <laughs> The way God designed our bodies is to model for understanding our lives together as the church. Every part dependent on another part. The parts as we mentioned and the parts we don't, the parts that we see and the parts we don't. If one part hurts, every other part is involved in the hurt and in the healing. It's beautiful. If one part flourishes... Every part enters into the exuberance. You are Christ's body. That's who you are. You must never forget this. Only as you accept your body as uh, a, 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 your part of the body does your part mean anything. You're familiar with some of the parts that God has formed in this church, which is the bodies, the apostles and prophets and teachers, miracle workers, healings, helpers, organizers, those who pray in tongues, shaka. We don't necessarily do that here, okay. But it's obvious by now, isn't it, that Christ's church is a complete body and not a gigantic, unidimensional part. It's not all apostle, not all prophet, not all miracle worker, not all healer, not all praying in tongues, not all interpreter of tongues, and yet some of you keep competing for so-called important parts. But now this is, I, I want to lay out a far better way. And it goes into Corinthians 13, and he starts talking about love and the importance of love. And really, love is the reason, and love is the vehicle that we're about to jump into. Now, I know uh, you know this part uh, uh, of Scripture, but I, I really want you to dig in. And there's a caveat before we go any further, because I really want to like kind of get to some heart and what I think might be some like improper theologies on your part part in the kingdom. Who knows that you love mom and dad until mom and dad have to start mom and dadding. The kids love mom and dad until mom and dad say, clean your room, do the dishes, stop locking your sister in the laundry room and turning off the lights. <laughs> I never did that. I, I, I swear. Sorry, I'm having flashbacks. Um, Everyone loves mom and dad, so mom and dad, dad's half the mom and dad. And everyone loves the pastor, hopefully, until the pastor kind of has to bring some thoughts on, on conviction and maybe uh, some, some sin that might be festering in you. And, and really, I, I want to I talk about maybe the sloth in our service. The sloth in the in the part that you have to play in, in, in the Sunday morning, I'm actually convicted, not so much that you don't know where you fit in, 
Because I think there's a lot of self-awareness in the room, and I think there's a lot of self-awareness in, in today's culture, but do you have the passion inside of you to really own your part, to really play out your part in building and furthering the kingdom? Now, again, this is not supposed to be heavy-handed or make you, you feel a certain way. I just want you to chew on it and think of it and let Holy Spirit talk to you. But I find it a bit concerning that some believers act in such a way where Jesus might not even be big enough uh, to give us the strength and the peace and the joy in serving. Got really quiet in here. Is Jesus big enough to actually give you the hope and the joy and the excitement and the life to say, I am going to step up and I am going to serve the very thing that is pushing the kingdom forward, and that is the church. Can I let you know that... Um, it's not very helpful to the body when you say yes, but you actually mean no in your spirit. The Bible actually says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. And so when you say no to something in this context, and then you bail in the name of, of, of something like your mental health. Oh, we're not allowed to go there, Pastor Drew. Don't go there. You're going to upset and you're going to offend somebody. But we come up with, with, with these things and, well, I need a second or, 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 or I, you know, I, just, I just need to take a time out. I'm wondering if we actually believe that Jesus is who he says he is and he's actually big enough to carry those moments so we can pour into the next generation that needs him more than we do. Because there's a generation that's actually dying there's actually a generation that is forgetting the good news because we just need a second. Because we just, we just need a moment. We need hands and we need feet and we need arms and we need eyes and we need ears. And we all need to ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what is my role in the kingdom? I'm just saying there are moments in life where we do things simply because we're part of a whole. If you're a part of the family, that means you have chores to do. I'm sorry, but I don't make enough money for, um, for someone to come in and clean my house for me. I wish I did. You can write me a check this morning. We'll talk. It, 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 it's fine with me. But everyone in the family has a part to play. Amen? Amen? Zoe actually does a great job of cleaning the bathroom. I think it's a spiritual gift of, of hers. It's, it, it's amazing. She, she does such a good job. But, but do you understand what I'm saying? We have a part to play in the house. We have a part to play as a family. And when we just let things slide, it's going to look like my bedroom. Messy and clothes everywhere. And my wife's saying, more dishes on the ground? I'm working on it, babe. I'm, I promise. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get there. We're going to fix it. But, but, but follow me this morning. See, see the word picture. We are the body of Christ. You interchange whatever word you need to this morning to, to, to go there. But we are the body of the Christ. We are the family of Christ. And, and, and I'm wondering this morning if you've been lazy in the family. I'm wondering if you've chosen the easy way out and you've said, you know what? Someone else will do it. Mom will pick it up. Dad will pick it up. It will get done another day or, or through, through an, uh, another person. Someone else can, can handle it. Man, I just have this conviction, and again, I'm, I, 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 might be, I might be kind of like feeling a certain way or in, in my feelings, and I, I don't want to offend, but I actually want to bring what I've been wrestling through this week. The church needs you, needs your service, needs your yes, needs your commitment to see the gospel be brought forth in this world. And before you feel judged and offended, I, I really believe that Holy Spirit is asking you to lean into um, one of the most practical functions of being a believer and simply put that as service for his kingdom. We need to remember, again, I've, I've said it many times, we belong to an upside-down kingdom. And so sometimes when we feel a certain way, our, our emotions get the best of us, or, or we're, you know, whatever it is, understand that God can actually use it and bring you life in moments when you feel depleted. When you feel depleted, lean on him. When you feel depleted, serve somebody else. 
Don't make it all about yourself. Psalm 92, 13 says, those who are planted in the house of the Lord will flourish in the courts of our God. Again, you might get it backward, but being planted doesn't mean just planting your butt in a comfy chair on Sunday morning. It actually means you're willing to leave this comfy place and go serve some kids. It actually means leaving this place and and letting Drew stress you out on the computer at 7 a.m. Carly's a legend. I I can't help it. It actually means moving and believing that God can actually see the function, see the service, and you don't grow tired, you grow stronger. You don't grow weaker, you grow stronger. And Holy Spirit breathes upon your yes. Holy Spirit breathes upon the moments of your sacrifice and your time and your comforts as you serve people. Can I let you know, again, remind you, in North America, the idea of struggle, the idea of like suffering for the kingdom, I don't think we'll really get it. Amen? I don't think we'll really understand what that means because we we get upset when we see our prime minister say something on TV and we get all bent out of shape about it. And that is our struggle. Uh Uh-oh, I'm preaching to somebody. I'm not getting political. I'm just telling you how it is. And so there's this struggle that we see in other countries where you're not allowed to profess the name of Jesus where people actually die in the name of their Lord and Savior. They actually share in his sufferings. I'm wondering if your suffering is saying, I can take two hours and I can show up and I can serve the local church. It doesn't doesn't sound like suffering to me. It sounds like service in the kingdom. And again, we belong to an upside kingdom where you might see it as suffering, but lean into it and invest into the thing that he loves, the things that he's invested in, and watch your, watch your connection with him grow. Watch your life grow. I got four things really quickly, and I mean it really quickly. Four things. I want you to write them down because I want you to think about them and uh, kind of go back to them. But number one is, is serving is discipleship in action. Serving is discipleship in action. We, one of our taglines here is we want to be disciples who make disciples. We want to be people, we want to be followers of the way in such a way that because of our lives and because of our investment into those around us, other disciples are being made and therefore other disciples will be made and so on and so forth. Do you want to see Jesus moving in your life? Serve someone else. You want to see the church grow and the gospel spread? Serve others. Again, this is one of the highest values we have here around Exchange Church. People who are committed, people who are investing in the way of Jesus. But just as we see in the Bible, discipleship is a function of the church that is lived out in motion. Rejoicing and struggling and praying and serving, they're all a part of the gig. And it's within these elements that consistency gives way to beautiful growth. Beautiful growth. I took, uh, I took Maddie Vash on golfing yes- yesterday. We, played, we just played a few holes, and the course was busy, and it was wild. And Maddie is, is yeah, hi, he won. There's, and you know what? Exchange, exchange is home for liars, too. It's good. No, it's, it's fantastic. I remember, I remember I said one thing to him as, as, as we were playing and giving him a few tips and tricks. And, uh, and I said, there, there's a game inside of you. So I said to him, I said, oh, there's definitely, there's definitely a game inside of you. What brings out the game? Consistency, investment, effort. Come on, somebody. When's the last time you were more concerned about the things of the kingdom than you were about your, your greatest hobby? When was the thing, oh, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I can serve or I don't, I'm not good at, uh, excuses, excuses. But when was the last time you said, you know what, God, if you're calling me to it, if you've called me to this house, if this is where I'm getting fed, if this is where I am planted, I want to flourish. And so use me. Use my yes. Discipleship in action. 
This is where serving is found. Number two, serving is a part of our identity as followers. Jesus didn't just serve strangers and the masses. You know that he had 12 guys that were hanging out with him consistently. He was consistently investing into a pocket of people around here. We call it small groups. Do you know that we have 10 to 12 small groups on the go uh, that are happening either right now or just about to kick off? We really believe that in these places, this is where you are going to get discipled. This is where you are going to grow within community. Serving is a part of our identity as uh, Christ followers, and he didn't just serve the masses. He served those that were closest to him. He served his own community, and I think we would be wise to do likewise. After all, we have a, a gift. We've been given a gift for the purpose of building God's house and building this community. Romans 15, 1, I love this. It says, those who are strong and able in the faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who are faltering. I know we got some strong, strong believers in this room. And I know we have some people that are just like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it to tomorrow. I, 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 I don't know if I have it in me. I love this. Those who are strong and able in faith need to step in and lend a hand to those who falter and not just do what is most convenient for us. It's not about you. Strength is for service, not status. You want the mic? Take the mic. I don't need it. It's not a show. But it's just another vehicle to remind you that you're to be used in the kingdom. Stop sitting out. Stop making excuses. Serving is a part of our identity as Jesus followers. You know those things that you're good at? It's not just for your benefit. God gave you gifts so that you can bless others along the journey. Number three, Serving exposes areas of our character that need refining. I'm going to say it again. Serving exposes areas of our character that need refining. Man, we're a selfish people. And I, I know I'm, I'm coming hard at you. And man, like you know that I love you and you know I hype so, so many of you guys up all the time because you serve so well. I'm just convicted that there's some things, some theologies, some, some excuses in our hearts that need refining. God, bring me back to that place where, where I loved serving the local church where I was excited to invite my friends to a space that was filled with the presence of Jesus Christ. Love coming to a place where someone like Erin, who has never played in front of a people, she looks so scared and so timid, but guess what? She is a part of the body, and my job, our job, is to cheer her on and call her forward because there's a gift on her life that this local body needs. It's what it's all about. It's what it's all about. And, and how did she get there? She just said yes. She just said yes. Now she can go home and tinker away on the keyboard and, and play in a room by herself. And I'm sure that would be great. She could minister to her own spirit. And it could be a time with her and Jesus. But man, in community, I really believe that that's where Jesus rides in on. Christianity is easy behind the scenes. Amen? Christianity is easy behind the scenes or when we hold people at a distance. But transformation really happens when we start to rub elbows with people who are hard to love or when we serve others in time where we'd rather just focus on ourselves. Serving will mature us spiritually. You want to grow deeper as a Jesus follower? Serve. You want to get to know his will for your life on a greater scale? Serve. See, yesterday was, last week was fun. And I was getting a lot of amens and it was fun. We love the church. Man, we love the church. 
We have the best church, don't we? Oh my goodness. We love the church. Do, do we love the church? Do we love Jesus enough? Do we trust him enough? Then when we step into the things that he's calling us to, that's when we begin to flourish. I want to see every single seat in this place filled. Uh, you know, when we started this church, we had to have two services. It was so packed. This is not about butts and seats. This is about people experiencing the life-changing presence of Jesus Christ. And I am convicted this morning. I am convicted this morning that if we don't go together, if we don't do this together, then we're never going to see the fulfillment of all that God has for us. And I would hate for that to be a part of a legacy of any church. Not just us, but any church. And so God convict us and expose those areas of our lives where, where our yes, whatever character flaw that is, that our yes needs refining. I'm going to end with this. Number four is serving teaches us to love others genuinely. I'm working on my empathy. I'm working on my empathy. My wife loves so well. I don't know if you know my wife well or, or if you've been in conversation or proximity to her. She loves people so well. I even said to her the other day, I don't know if I can even ever get on your level. I don't know if I'll be able to, like, love. Yeah, Jackie's just like, yep, she's right. <laughs> You're right. But I'm, I'm working on my empathy and I'm asking God to refine my heart to genuinely love the things that he loved and, and the people that he loved. 1 John 4, 19 says, we love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. The best atmosphere and motivation for service is not just duty, it's love. I'm not asking you to say yes just to fill in some gaps. I'm asking you to say, Holy Spirit, refine my heart. Help me love people genuinely. And so when I say yes, it's not out of duty, but it's out of love for the thing that you love. God honors love as motivation for our service, but he does not honor empty, unloving duty. Husbands, here's how not to approach your wife. Some big tips for you this morning. <laughs> Sweetheart, I love you because I'm supposed to. I, I love you because it's my duty. You're not going to get any points, I'm telling you right now. Tell me how that one works out for you. As you serve your wife and your family and your friends, as you serve those in your local church, connections are made and Holy Spirit actually gives you the ability to see people in the way that, that he does. And the investment you can dig into yields an incredible harvest. I'll end with this. I remember when I was a youth pastor, and I remember I started something called Young Guns because everything needed to have a cool name. Nobody wanted to show up if the name was dumb. So we started something called Young Guns, and I took about 12 grade nines, and it was in a smaller community, so it was easy to all kind of meet up in one place, and we met in a coffee shop every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m., and we would soap through scripture observation application prayer. We would soap through scriptures. I would make them do it beforehand. And then they would bring it. And they would talk through it. And you could see the investment of an early morning. Sacrifice somebody. Hello. I'm not sanctified until it's 10 a.m. An early morning, yes. 
And then you see the investment that you poured into it, that I poured into it, and you would watch them grow in the things of God. You would watch them grow in the Word. You would watch them grow in community. And then not on, on a Tuesday morning, but on a Tuesday night, it would be junior high time. And the grade nines would pour into the junior highs. And you could see the love. And you could see just the genuineness of heart as they poured into the next generation. Why? Because it was their yes in motion it was their yes to Jesus in service it was yes to Jesus in building the very thing that is closest to his heart and that's both place and person it's the church now I've been all up in my feelings this morning I get it and I've been wrestling with this and I've been praying this through I'll tell you right now this is not a call to action we are not we're not drowning in any area of exchange. We're seeing people flourish all over the place. But maybe, just maybe, you've been comfortable in your Sunday situation for too long. I guarantee you when you invest in the local house, when you get planted, you will flourish. And when you serve you are actually bringing, you're, you're opening your life, you're opening up opportunities for God to move in new and powerful ways, not only in you, but through you. You can talk to me, you can talk to Andy, you can talk to Pastor Larissa, Pastor Brad. Heck, go, go hunt down Carly if you want to help her. But there are many opportunities for you to serve in this house. And I do, I just have this conviction right now that the way that we grow as a community, the way that the gospel is spread through Exchange Church is through your active service. We love the church. We love the church. Do you believe that Jesus is calling you closer to his heart, to service in community? I'm gonna pray and I'll leave it with you. But God, thank you so much for this morning. Even through convoluted thoughts and, and feeling a certain way, God, I know that you're moving. I know that, Holy Spirit, you've said things that I haven't said. You've placed burdens on people's hearts. You've put faces and situations and serving opportunities on people's hearts in, in this moment. And Holy Spirit, I pray that we would have the courage this morning, we would have the boldness this morning not to leave this place until we, we step out and we say yes to the things that you're calling us to, to the people that you're calling us to, to the places that you're calling us to. We know that you are building your church and the gates cannot and will not stand against it. And so we have nothing to fear, nothing to fear. We are completely safe, completely whole in you. So give us courage and boldness to step out in these coming days as you grow your church, both place and person. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Hey, sorry for going long. Next week's going to be a lot more fun, I promise. We'll see you next week. Love you guys.